Let's start working with some lights. First, let's add a camera. Layer, new, camera. 35 is OK. Hit OK. There's our camera. And let's uh, add a solid. We'll start with uh, the background. Layer, new, solid. Orange, fine, orange, great. It's the comp size. Perfect. There it is. Let's make it 3D. There it is again. Let's add a light. Layer, new, light. Light, spot, blah, 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 cast shadows, yes, shadow darkness, 50, shadow diffusion, zero, fine, sounds good. Note, shadows are only cast from layers with cast shadows enabled to layers with accept shadows enabled. Okay. And there's our light. Hit V for the selection tool. The light comes with a point of interest that you can animate, move around. You can also animate the light's position. When you animate the light's position by uh, dragging with the uh, dragging the arrows like this, the point of interest comes with it, which is very handy. And uh, let's hit AA to show the light's properties, or the light options as they call them. The intensity. This can be animated. All of them with a stopwatch can be animated. The color can be changed. The cone angle can be changed. The cone feather can be changed from 100% soft to 0% soft, which makes it a hard spot. Great for a vector kind of look. Let's undo that. Go back to 90 for the angle and the feather at 50. Cast shadows on because we had it set to that. You can switch it off if you want. Uh, but that doesn't mean very much until we actually get something in there to start uh, showing some shadows. By the way, if you have the transparency grid off and your background color is black and your light is pointing way the heck over here, you might think you've lost your layer. If you want to find it again, hit the transparency grid or change the color of your background composition background color to something like blue there you go and then you move your light until you can see everything again so let's add some text T or command T type uh, hit V, drag it. Okay, let's make it 3D. And there it is. If we move it, and we can do that by grabbing the little Z arrow there, it gets closer to the light, and so parts of it start going outside of the lighting cone. So be, beware that if, you're, if you can't see your text, it might be because it's simply not in the light. Like if we move it over here, it's not in the light. It's black. But luckily our background is blue, so we can still know where the text is. But let's move it back into the spotlight. Let's move it back. If we move it too far back, it'll disappear because it's now behind the background layer. The stacking order doesn't matter with 3D layers. See, this, the text is now underneath the orange solid in the stacking layer. However, we can still see it. What matters is the Z position of it. Is it actually behind it or is it in front of it? So let's bring it somewhat in front. Let's set... I usually like ordering them this way just to make sure that I know what's going on. This is just for my own way of working. Let's uh, make the Splink cast shadows. Hit AA. You get your material options. And let us choose it. Uh, let's make it cast shadows. Boom. There we go. 
in order for shadows to be seen, the light has to be casting shadows, the text or whatever has to be casting shadows, and the solid, AA, has to be accepting shadows. It seems that now they've set solids to automatically accept shadows, which is fine. That's great. So if we move the light around, we see that the shadows move as well. If we look to the right, the shadows move. That's what we would expect them to do, which is great. If we move our camera around, hit C, we get another view of things. Now let's take a look at the material options for the text. First let's move the hit V, move the light out of our out of the way. And let's look at the text material options, AA, and let's up the shininess. What does that mean? Well, if we up the shininess a lot, that means that the highlight that the light makes, the reflective highlight, is smaller. Let's move the camera around. See? There it is. You can see the reflected highlight in the text. Let's make it brighter by increasing the specular value. There we go. Move the camera around and you can see a reflected highlight in the text. The metal function means that the highlight has color. If we decrease the metal function, the highlight is white and it has more of a plastic look. That's under the material options, which is activated by hitting AA. Now you can do the same thing with the light, AA, and you can make the shadow darkness greater if you want, like that. You can also increase the diffusion of the shadows, make it soft, like that. However, shadow diffusion tends to slow down rendering time, so if you find that After Effects is responding a little more slowly than you'd like, you can use Draft 3D mode, which is accessed by this button right here. And that switches off temporarily the lights and shadows, allowing you to move much more quickly. So sometimes it's uh, good to do that. It's good to uh, eschew our normal desire to work with our pretty shadows always visible because sometimes that just takes so long we might not get the project done. So work in Draft 3D if you want to work quickly. Okay, that should give you a start.